Okay. Get the mouse. Get it. Felix. Felix. I still have it. Felix. <laughs> I tricked you. Get the mouse. Now that is special in a cat. You're good, Felix. I got it still. Get the mouse. <laughs> That's special. Good morning, everybody. We had the most miserably cold night so far this year. It was three degrees this morning. And the greenhouse, um, the thermometer was glitching out on me. I'm having trouble with thermometers out here at the off-grid homestead. Uh, the clock and nothing else is right in here because I reset the transmitter on that. We have 49 degrees in the greenhouse with no heat right now. The I let the wood stove go out last night. Oops, my shutter's not shutting anymore. My camera's slowly going bad. My, um, I had 49 degrees, or sorry, I let the wood stove go out last night, and I'm gonna tell you what issues I have with that. Mice have actually damaged my wood stove in the greenhouse. I know, that sounds weird, but I'll show you what I mean. But I, that went out, and I used a small Mr. Heater Buddy overnight, and now this morning it was showing 25 degrees in the greenhouse according to this thermometer. But the thermometer wasn't working. And all of a sudden it flipped to 45 degrees this morning. And it's going up just from the energy of the sun. We didn't lose anything in the greenhouse, so I don't believe it was as cold as that said. Um, this one here is giving me trouble. It's been giving me trouble for three weeks now. The outdoor temperature has been... Um, showing 27.7 degrees and 44% humidity ongoing for um, a few weeks. And I went out and put new batteries in it and now I've just lost everything outdoors. It's All of my outdoor settings are gone. Everything. So I don't know if this one is dying on me and going out or what. I just put brand new batteries in it and lost everything. So that's frustrating. This outdoor thermometer hasn't been working at all in weeks. And <laughs> new batteries didn't make it happy. New batteries made it mad, but it wasn't working anyway. Um, 60 degrees in the tiny house on wheels, but that was with a three degree night. And we're in limp mode on the wood stove. I'll explain that later, but the wood stove it has failed us in the tiny house in Wales as well. And it needs some major surgical operations in order for us to get back on track again. Hey everybody. My brand new thermometer seems to be glitching out on me. I'm not sure. It never got anything in it or on it. And I've been very, very careful to not let anything touch the spring metal on the back. There's nothing around it. And I took it down off the tree to make sure it wasn't going to get harmed. Uh, by the wind and I said it here uh, Maybe it's getting a false reading. Maybe it is 40 uh, Degrees here with the Sun bouncing off the solar panels. So this is probably not the best place to put this Because um, it's reading 40 degrees and it's actually 26 degrees out right now um, According to all the other thermometers that I've seen we were in town got some supplies for the greenhouse but um, Yeah, I don't know that's Definitely a false reading, so it's got to be from coming from the warmth of the wood and bouncing off the solar panels. It's got to be what's going on here. I got good news and bad news out here in the um, off-grid battery shed. Uh, the batteries are 13.2. We've got 5 amps on the one set of panels and 11 off the other. So we're looking at about 200 watts of power. Not really good, but it's better than nothing. Now, um, everything's cold in here. I'll show you how cold it is. Now, um, the cold, it was the coldest night of the year. So I dropped all the plumbing. I disconnected all of the hoses 
And here, I, I disconnected everything and I opened all the valves in the house because I knew this was going to happen last night. It was absolutely miserably cold. Now what I've got, unfortunately, is wind coming up underneath the walls of the shed and um, causing freezing conditions in here regardless of what else I do. Also, our water pump has failed on us uh, even before it got cold out. Our water pump is dead. It stopped pressurizing and while well, it was an old pump you can tell it was I think this was from my camper I can't remember but that was I think from my old camper or one I salvaged off another camper but anyway it was old and uh, it started taking longer and longer and longer to pressurize the system so um, we lost running water in the house and so I disconnected all the plumbing and gave up the shed as a loss for, t for right now um, we were consuming too much firewood trying to keep the shed warm for no reason at all so we let it go and drain the lines in the house so there's no water it right now but the good news is I have a brand new SureFlow pump that somebody sent me in the mail a while back the bad news is that the fittings of those pumps are different from this the good news is I went to the hardware store and got new fittings and adapters to fit the plumbing in here so now I just got to rethaw everything out and uh, put stuff back together in the tiny house on wheels and have running water again. Okay. You can turn around and show everybody what I did on the roof the other day. The insulated oh, roofing. That's right, I did. Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. I didn't do any video though. It was just really bitter cold and it was all I could do to survive. But I got that done, and now we're hanging up moving blankets on curtains, or you're going to be made like curtains for nighttime. The greenhouse somewhat mostly survived last night, a bitter cold, three degrees last night. I figure if we survive three degrees, that's colder than anything I've seen in two years out here. If we survive three degrees, then it's worth saving. It's definitely worth working on. But I think I can improve things by insulating here some. And I think the curtains will help retain heat at night. Um, it goes here. Melanie, could you give me a hook, please? Okay. What is this thing I keep kicking? Oh. Is there a purpose for that other than poking my leg? No. No? Okay. That's the only reason you put it there is to poke my leg? No. Is that what you're telling me? No, it's not. Well, that's what you just said. <laughs> I bet you. <laughs> I know that. I got that. <laughs> Be careful. I I want I don't want you to be hurt. Did you really cut that? Uh, are you recording or no? I did record. Okay. This is the hardest part right here. These high ones. This wall is twelve feet high off the ground. Fortunately, my raised bed boxer gave me a platform to stand on. And then I'll hang the curtains. Mm. Happy that didn't go all the way down. Uh. Then I'll hang my homemade insulated curtains. Show them the curtains. Movie blankets. Mm -hmm. They were going to use as curtains because they're insulated, they're heavy duty. Should make a huge difference in here at night. And then we'll slide them open for daytime. And they're going to be on clips so we can remove them for summer without too much trouble. Uh, this treated lumber, I'll tell you, is some hard stuff to work with. Oh. It's really, really cold. It's what? It's really cold. Oh, it's 41 degrees. It's not that cold. 
But then, Not compared to how uh, it is outside. It was a mag max of 26 outside today. And I want to put some tension on them. One, two, three, four. I might have to rethink my hooks. Um, I've got three blankets. I'm going to have to take out the two middle hooks because we're not going to be able, unless I pull the curtain this way and this way, I'm going to have to see how it works because we have three blankets and we have one, two, mm -hmm. three, one, two, three, yeah. I'm not sure how it's going to come out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I gotta think about this. All right, you can pause. Because we've got three blankets. Well, there you have it, guys. Quilted blankets for the front windows. I still have to do the side and over by the door. Hi, Melanie. Hi. I'm gonna make the same type of a curtain effect here for the doorway. And I've got another one that I'll put up over on this window. And then we'll have our, hopefully, insulated um, windows for the nighttime. I still got insulation to do up there and up in there, but everything takes time. And then the snow insulates a little bit as well. That hasn't melted at all. So you can tell it hasn't warmed up at all since it snowed. So there's uh, three pieces up. And you can see a close up of how I did that. I used clip on, those are note clips and ring binder rings and eye hooks and a piece of rope. So the note clips in the ring binder rings form curtain hangers. It looks like that, that one needs to be adjusted, it's slipping some. Uh, the idea though is that they're easy to disconnect. There I tied those two together, but I'm not going to do that again because that's too much trouble every day. Uh, the idea is in summer I can pull them down really easily. And there's one curtain. Very, very simple and quick work to put up a curtain in the uh, off-grid greenhouse. Now there's a little bit of window space left. Uh, the, that's six foot long curtains. So I guess it means I have seven foot of window space total. Real window space, seven foot. Although the greenhouse is 12 foot high, the windows are actually seven feet. I see that now. Anyway, I think that'll be good and help insulate it a lot. We will find out because tonight is going to be one degree Fahrenheit. And this is going to be the true test of all. Well, there's the doorway, guys. I've extended that curtain and it unfolded. It extends all the way almost fully to the corner. So there's the doorway on a curtain rod, homemade curtain rod. And then the other three that we had before. And then the other side, um, whoops, focus, focus, focus. On the other side, we have another curtain, but it's a little shorter. That one didn't quite cover all the way. So I'll probably get a second one, and then I can add it next to that one side by side. I think that's the best way to go. What do you think, Melanie? Yes, you're right. Um, that'll be best. And then I'll cover that top to bottom entirely and uh, help insulate this place better. So, yep, that was only $5 at Tractor Supply. So, and we have enough rings and hooks? Um, we just have one. Well, only one left, so we have to get more rings and hooks? Yeah. Okay. Well, we will have to get more rings and hooks, but there at least is a series of curtains. So, now I've got to get some fire going here and uh, try to save this place from freezing tonight. There's Melanie's butterflies. I kept them in the greenhouse for <laughs> a long life. They're too pretty to put outside. And it works. In here, those of you who watched my videos back in the past would know there used to be a rope gasket in here. A fiberglass rope gasket. And the mice have taken it out and used it for nesting. And I did not know that mice would use fiberglass rope gasket material for nesting. I now know that. Anyway, that is where this has been inefficient. Because in my off-grid camper back in the day when I first moved out into the off-grid camper, I had gasket in here. And I couldn't figure out I'm burning wood and I'm burning wood and just blasting through the wood in here never gaining a thing. I couldn't figure out why. And... 
It's because there's no gasket here. And when I started out, I had a gasket in here. No, I don't. So I've got some uh, fireplace cement that says it can be used, high heat furnace cement. Um, so I'm gonna be putting that in here and hopefully that'll make a difference. Inside the tiny house and wheels, we have had a little bit of a crisis. You might notice that the stove pipe is on the floor. Um, a adapter plate, I don't know why or how, well, I'll have to take you upstairs, has disintegrated on us. Um, oops, where's my headlamp? Thank you. That perfect. That Melanie's smart. She's right on it. The adapter plate that held uh, right there this coupling from here, this piece, between the stainless steel pipe and through the ceiling box, disintegrated. Absolutely disintegrated. Nothing else did just that. And as you can see, the smoke marks smoke was coming into the tiny house on wheels so on the coldest day of the entire year we had to let the fire go out and then i was able to pull out the remnants of that thing which i'll show you in a minute there wasn't much left at all and it worries me why that was so um but a lot of people were concerned with the cleanliness of the stove pipe the chimney pipe it's clean i just had a good look down through it and there's nothing wrong what I didn't tell you guys in earlier in the year is I've already serviced this entire system because it all fell apart on me one time and uh, I had to build that frame down below. Anyway, it's all been serviced earlier this, this year, so this was all clean. And it is still clean now, so I'm sure that's going to relieve a lot of people. Now, I've got to try to put that up together in there and... Put it back in place this is going to be fun now i'm going to let you watch me attempt to put this through here there's going to be some grunting some groaning and some quick comments most likely of me saying melanie do this that quick quick whatever melanie understands do you melanie understand yes, do you accept this task that is presented to you yes i am uh, <laughs> yes i do is the problem yes i do okay we are going to attempt Put this thing back together uh, through that hole. How is this? And I can't see what I'm doing, so this is going to be an exciting challenge. Once I get this up in the air, I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to need you to carefully pull this back forward. I think it's back, I think it actually is in place somewhat. All right, so once I figure it out, I need you to help me guide this pipe back onto this stand mm -hmm. when, we're, when we're done, okay? I don't think it moved, <laughs> the stand. The pipe did. The pipe's a mess, but okay? Did you put the new cap? Yes, the new cap, uh, the new adapter piece is on, yes. Now all I've got to do is put that into the hole up there, and then we prop this back on here, and then I can adjust it back into the stove itself. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, that's just some something fell in there. I don't know. So, all right. Now we're not worried about this part yet, where it swings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need you to reach around. It's going to be awkward. Maybe you should come around that way, Melanie. Get that can out of your way. Okay. And get yourself in that corner. That way you can help me get this on here when I'm ready. All right. Now these are two separate things. Don't worry about this. Okay. That is just a heat shield for the wall. Okay. This is the stand, and it's attached to the floor, so don't wrench on it too much. Let it go. Let go of it. See how it sits there? It's attached to that floor. Yeah. So I need this to guide down to here, though. And this is just a heat shield. So this one is going. That's attached here. to the floor. Yes. The bottom of this oh. sits on here. Ready? Okay. All right. I'm just going to need you to help me guide it once I get this up, because it's extremely heavy, and I can't see what it's doing up here. Oh no. That's okay. I okay. think that's okay. Oh wait, there's a screw on that. Is that attached? No, that's fine. We can deal with that. Okay. It's a mess. Oh, we can deal with it. Okay. Getting this into that Any hole more. is an absolute nightmare. Because okay. I can't see anything. Maybe you might be better off upstairs. Maybe. Because I can't see what Maybe. I'm doing. Maybe you can guide me. Oh. Help. Maybe you can guide that in. To that hole because I can't see. Am I straight? Tell me when I'm going in. Mm -hmm. It goes inside that pipe. Inside? Inside. 
The coupler, the, the black pipe goes up inside that. There, we got it. We got it, Melanie. Thank you. We did it. Okay, now this comes and rests on here. Now, okay, that has been bothering me. I'm going to rotate this entire thing. See that dent? Yeah. That's where the pipe fell down last year. I'm going to rotate this thing. So I'm going to lift up a little. I'm going to rotate this around. You're going to help me turn it all the way around to where we have pretty pipes going. Yeah. Keep going. Okay, and that's to the back. Thank you. Now we put this back. Let it come down. We are good. Can I have to check it um. Well, is it in? It's it's in there, right? Yeah. It's in there. Okay. Then we're good. Now, did we undo these two pipes, or are they still together? These two look wobbly. Yeah. All right. Now hold that pipe steady. Grab it with both hands. I've got to see what I did wrong here. Oh, hold that pipe steady. Tight. Hold that pipe tight. Okay, let go. It's yeah. tight. Okay. Now, this is a mess. Oh. Hold it. Hold it steady. Yeah. Ah. What do I got going on here? Oh no. Oh, okay, this, it, it's not going to work like I wanted. This stove pipe here is stuck inside this pipe, so. Oh, no, it's rotating. I know I'm rotating it. It's okay, it's okay. okay. We're not going to be able to do what I wanted. This pipe is stuck. Okay. Alright guys, well, we have it back up in the ceiling, now I've got to get this all back in place and put the pipes back together. We have a mess on the floor in here, but that's unavoidable, it is how it is. Now I'm going to put all this back together. If I can switch to all steel pipe, I will. Maybe next year. This stuff is terrible. This black pipe doesn't last. Okay. Yes. This mess all is just a little bit holding it. Up top? That one. Oh yeah, that's good. That's exactly how it goes. Okay. There's, that's as good as it gets. Oh, am I good? Okay. And onto the wood stove. Tight and on to the cap. There we go. And I'll put filler cleaner cap back on. What a mess. Done. We did it, Melanie. Oh, we did it. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. And then the injury occurs when the Leatherman falls on my feet after we're done. Alright guys. I've got a mess to clean up, but we put our stove pipe back together. All good as new. Definitely want to replace that junk black stuff in the future. Next year. Hi everybody. I'm holding the camera at a funny angle because we have two cards and I don't want to show people's addresses. Mm -hmm. So Melanie's going to turn them over. And we've got some cards came in the mail today. Yes. Thank you, Melanie. Yeah. Now, we are wearing sweatshirts and coats because the tiny house on wheels has had no heat for 24 hours. And it's very, very cold in here. Mm -hmm. It's very cold. I got my coat on. We just got the fire going, finally, after repairing the wood stove. Throw us a card, the front. Oh, three wise men. Let me see. They followed a star to the light of the world. Okay, you're gonna read it. I'll read it. All right, let me pause the camera a minute and see what's in there. So there's 
One card we got. We're not going to read people's personal writings to us, but there's one card. And Melanie's going to open the other, one. other card. Okay. If you notice some smoke in here, it's because we had a bit of a glitch earlier. But we fixed it. Bless you. Okay. Um, I'm going to read this out, but I'm not going to show you what I'm looking at, so you can look at this one. It says here, It's your first Christmas together as husband and wife. May it be magical and filled with the love of God. So that's that one. And we'll look at that one while I see what this one says. Um, always enjoy your videos, and I'm in your corner. So, And the card itself has some scriptures. Um, the wise men sought the babe from above, the holy child, the gift of God's love. The heavens obeyed, and God's plan unfurled, as a star led the way to the light of the world. And Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. And it also says, May God's love illuminate your path and brighten each day as you seek the Savior. So there's... Two cards. That's nice. Thank you both. Thank you Thank very you much. Both. There's also a private letter which we'll read ourselves. Good night, everybody. Troy and Melanie, Melanie from the Do It Yourself World and the Off Grid Project. Hey, everybody. This is Troy and Melanie from the Do It Yourself World and the Off Grid Project. Please subscribe and follow our daily videos as we strive to become self sufficient and off the grid on a budget. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for watching.